Praise the Lord. Ooh. I don't like to be in front. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I wanted to share this testimony today because um, God was faithful over me, over my family, over my kids. Um, last month, we traveled to Nigeria. When I say we, it's we, family of five. The only person that did not go was my big boy because he was in college. And we arrived on the 16th. Um, we traveled to Ekiti because the reason why we traveled was because my father-in-law was clocking 90. So we traveled to Ekiti on the 17th and we did the celebration. Um, it was a low key, it wasn't like a flamboyant or no musician, nothing. It was just a family, everybody coming together like a family reunion. And then we went to bed. I was so tired, I just fell asleep. I didn't even know who was sleeping where. The house we were in is kind of like a big family. It's my house, my brother-in-law's house. We next neighbor to one another, so it was a whole family that was there. We slept, and the next thing that woke me up was loud banging on the door. And at first I wasn't even thinking what's going on. I don't know what was happening. I just woke up and then I realized that my girl was with me on the bed. So, and they came in. The arm robber came in with guns. And I don't know what to think. I don't know what to do. Um, they're like, do you have phones? Do you have key? They were asking for car keys. I'm like, I don't even have a car here. You know, so I, I couldn't even answer them. Before I could answer them, they saw my phone, they saw my daughter's phone. So they picked that up and then I, I just said, you know what, I have money, I can give you money. I said, I can give you money. And the only reason why I was able to offer is that when I was going, God gave me the insight instead of carrying my dollars with me. And because the event was so close to when we're gonna be there, I don't want to be rushing to change money. So I had sent a couple of money to my dad and said, I just need 500,000 to go to Ekiti and come back. And I said, just give me 500,000 from what dad, at least that will take care of all the things that I've told them to do. I can settle my bills and come back. So that was what I have with me. So I said, I can give you the money. They're like, okay, where is the money? So I gave them my bag as I was gonna take the money out, they collected my bag, empty everything, and take whatever they desire. Meanwhile, they're like, are you lying to us? We want, they said, they, I guess in the hallway, they were hugging with one another saying, I thought you said they have dollars or whatever. I said, I already gave you what I have. You emptied the bag yourself. So um, they went, they came back and said, give me your gold. And I'm like, I don't even wear gold. I said, I don't wear gold. I have one that I said, see, this is what I wear. I don't buy gold, I don't do gold. My daughter was so brave, I thank God. She was so brave that she was the one opening the boxes for them to look for the gold that is not there. And I just wanna give this testimony because it could have been different. I have three kids that don't even understand Joko Sibaya because they don't even want to understand it. And one of them was on his phone in the other room because like I said, I didn't know where anybody was sleeping. I, I was so tired that I just fell asleep myself. So the big boy, the Ibukun, the next second born said, they asked him, do you school in Nigeria? And he said, yes. And I don't know, maybe that was why they did not take him. I don't know, maybe that was why they did not take any one of us. The house was full with teenage girls, like pretty girls, and we just give God the glory that we did not get nothing to happen. So I just want you guys to thank God on our behalf for his faithfulness, 
that he kept us, we went, we came back safely, and we did not come back with one missing, with uh, people getting shot or anything. Just don't agree. Uh, um, Pastor, okay.